So telling us, don't you know that I'm the president, means either he himself is not aware, or he's not sure, mm -hmm. or he's yet to come into reality, into terms with it that, yes, he's the president. I just want to remind him, you are the president, my brother. <laughs> well, he has realized that uh, every evening chicken come home to roost. And his chicken, uh, chickens came back so soon. <laughs> so uh, he has realized <laughs> that the tradition that uh, was set between William Ruto <laughs> and President Uru Kenyatta <laughs> is now going to catch up with him. Truly delighted to have you on Richard Mwenge exclusive here on Haman Manyora's uh, YouTube channel. It is always a pleasure to have you on board. Now today we're going to discuss a plethora of issues in the world of politics and governance, particularly that touching on what has been uh, profiled as oppressive and predatory taxes, taxes and the outcry from a section of Mount Kenya MPs over uh, some uh, uh, taxes enshrined in the Finance Act of 2023. That and much more is going to be part of this conversation. But first things first, let me introduce the man who will help me unpack the conversation of the day. He is the first of his name, a man of many firsts, former cabinet minister, Kipruto Arab Kirwa. Welcome on board, sir. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure uh -huh. always to be with you uh -huh. and to inform our viewers mm -hmm. on this particular channel. Many of our followers say you are someone with a, a huge repository of knowledge, a huge bank of knowledge, historical knowledge, current affairs, and they want to call you either Agui KK or Grandpa KK. All thanks to you being here for quite a long time. <laughs> so which one do you choose among the two names? It's just Agui is enough. Agui is enough. Agui is enough. Uh -huh. Yes. In Swahili, what does that mean? Uh, kuka. Kuka. Yeah. Ah, yeah. good one. That of the way, let's start the conversation with matters to do with Mount Kenya, and particularly uh, outcry from, from a number of uh, members of parliament led by Gatanga MP Edward Muriu over what he terms predatory uh, and unfair taxes, uh, which is leveled against the farmers, that which was enshrined in the Finance Act of 2023, Agricultural and Produce Tax. Let me ask you, for these members of parliament, particularly for Mount Kenya, many of whom voted for the Finance Act 2023 in unison, have we seen more of crocodile tears and double play and double standards now crying over the same thing that they passed with, uh, with huge green light? Well, uh, you know, every regime operates mm -hmm. on different uh, level of freedom mm -hmm. and uh, level of suspicion. Mm -hmm. there, there is something during my time we are calling uh, miscellaneous amendment bill. Mm -hmm. Under miscellaneous amendment bill, a lot of clauses would be sneaked in mm -hmm. in a way that a member of parliament will just go through the bill, uh, almost say it is okay, but those small clauses mm -hmm. are sneaked in by saying delete section this of that and insert this without giving the full text mm -hmm. of what are you deleting, uh -huh. what are you inserting. Sure. So I, I do hope um, part of the problem is that even this finance bill was discussed within the shortest time and passed before even a number of members of parliament uh, have a chance. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've always maintained that yes, the president means well. Uh, yes, the president's team may mean well, mm -hmm. but they don't seem to have enough prior planning. Mm -hmm. So that uh, each person who makes a contribution, mm -hmm. that contribution is captured mm -hmm. and uh, processed. Because at times an idea from you or from any other person mm -hmm. may come out as if it's not a good idea. But once you explain to me, I'll say, okay, this bill is going to be better than I thought. Mm -hmm. Because as they say, anything good can be bettered. It's not always that any idea that you have is the final idea. Mm -hmm. That's why research goes on. Some of the findings, even in chemistry, uh -huh. of 20 years ago <coughs> have now been proven by further research uh -huh. that has uh, almost obviated uh -huh. their existence. Very well. So it is important that uh, members of parliament, first, should be keen, two, should have enough time to discuss issues because their main function, apart from others, is to legislate. Uh -huh. And if you do it wrongly, then you can face the anger of the people in the next election. Uh -huh. And don't blame them, because I always say, Raya can never be wrong. 
Let's advance that conversation. Yes. And we understand that this current regime has an ambitious revenue collection target. And it is perhaps what informed the Finance Act of 2023 in its whole entirety. But when you see members of parliament like Edward uh, Murillo of Gatanga inciting the masses back there in his backyard not to pay taxes to KRA over what they term predatory 3% uh, tax, agricultural produce tax, is it that such members of parliament are underrating public and social intelligence because we all understood that he, he was part of those who voted for the bill? Well, I think also, uh, mm -hmm. as I said at the beginning, uh -huh. possibly voted not knowing exactly what the implication was. Mm -hmm. Because you see, there is the law mm -hmm. and there is the interpretation of that law uh -huh. and the application. Mm -hmm. So at times you may vote because you see there's, no, there's nothing wrong, mm -hmm. only to realize that it's going to do a lot of damage. For example, those who come from mass growing areas, mm -hmm. uh, who realize they will lose almost up to 400 shillings uh -huh. for every 90 kilo bag of maize. Mm -hmm. And 400 shillings uh, for every 90 kilo bag of maize means a lot into the losses the farmers face every year. Uh -huh. So perhaps uh, Wakili Murillo may not, despite the fact that he's a lawyer, you see the law as is mm -hmm. and the interpretation of the application of the law uh -huh. is not the, 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 the law court in, uh, interpretation. Mm -hmm. Once you are a legislator for a certain period, like for, for example, the period I served, yeah. about 20 years, you come to understand what is the implication of this? Mm -hmm. What is the implication of this? How does it operate in normal society? So perhaps they have realized the government is not listening. So by going to that extreme is to agitate the public mm -hmm. and also make the president uh, almost retreat Mm -hmm. on the position he had taken mm -hmm. about taxation. Uh -huh. Otherwise, overall, mm -hmm. issues of taxes to farm produce mm -hmm. is not only moral, but unjustifiable because there is no country in the world. And you know, at times when, you, when we say this, we are saying it not because we have a problem with this regime. Mm -hmm. We are saying it because that is a statement of a fact. 16% is a profit any farmer can get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's why in many jurisdictions, farmers are subsidized, whether it is fertilizer, whether it is fuel or other farm inputs, because you have to cover them or insulate them from the vagaries of weather. Sure. Because at times you may have a good crop from April, like for us in Transoya, sure. all the way up to July. But in July, when the maize is tussling, the rain goes away for three weeks. <laughs> that is enough to cut the crop harvest by almost 50 percent very well and therefore you'll already been in loss making enterprise that began with a lot of promises well moving on swiftly let me have your thoughts on this conversation that has been brought up by uh, senator aaron chiriot over the outcry from a section of mount kenya uh, members of parliament over what they call a predatory farm uh, produce tax and he had this to say all farmers are equal my tea farmers pay all their due taxes and levies tens of billions annually. What is special about these farmers we are being told shouldn't be taxed? It's free lunch for all of us or we all pay. No special meals to some. Is this a conversation that we should embrace and that we should even give it more voice? Well, I think to, to say the least is naive mm -hmm. because every crop has its own challenges mm -hmm. and uh, some of the crops that he's talking about may not be affected in the same way. Avocado, Mm -hmm. maize, beans, or any other produce that you pass through a uh, cooperative or so. Mm -hmm. The taxes that he's talking about in the tea sector includes even corporate tax for the factories that process mm -hmm. uh, some of these, um, uh, some of the tea. So you cannot equate all the crops. What we need to do, and also for a leader to the level of my majority in the Senate, that is totally juvenile, irresponsible, and and called for mm -hmm. i would have expected him to be more guarded because he is not supposed to represent kericho at the level that he is he's representing the nation mm -hmm. as leader of majority in the senate mm -hmm. but if he was an mp from kericho that is okay mm -hmm. uh, he, i think he overshot the runway mm -hmm. by almost talking as if there is a fight between Mount Kenya and Kericho. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it doesn't assist. It doesn't. Because let's look at each case 
-hmm. dispassionately. Uh -huh. And uh, each case has unique challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one person who has supported that conversation, and they, they need for us to go to the negotiation table and see how we can turn around the issue, especially that uh, that, that, that touches with avocado farmers yeah. in Moranga, is D.P. Gashago who said he's going to talk to members of parliament and make sure they legislate over again over, the, over what they say is the predatory bill. But let me ask you, what do you think has informed Gashago to have a U-turn about the Finance Act of 2023? Is it that he has finally got his Damascus moment and that this could actually, <laughs> could actually uh, compromise his future political bid in Mount Kenya? Well, he has realized that uh, every evening chicken come home to roost. And his chicken, uh, chickens came back so soon. <laughs> so uh, he has realized... <laughs> That the tradition that uh, was set between William Ruto mm -hmm. and President Uhuru Kenyatta mm -hmm. is now going to catch up with him. Uh -huh. He has to survive on his own. Sooner than later? Uh, sooner than later. You see, being a running mate mm -hmm. does not earn you a permanent ticket that you are going to be like same as twins. Uhuru Kenyatta tried with Ruto for the first time, mm -hmm. and uh, the second time, they were almost at variance in whatever decision they made, including the BBI. So this handshake that has now been brought through the back door by William Luther under the guise of AU Commission mm -hmm. is another handshake by any other name. It could scuttle regarding his future ambitions? It even can scuttle his existence for the balance of the term. <laughs> <laughs> because anything can happen. Uh -huh. yeah. It can get that bad? It can get that bad because you see, <laughs> uh, when somebody is in office, uh, at the beginning there is still some kind of... Um, collective uh, kind of uh, mm -hmm. enjoyment and the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Once the honeymoon is over, mm -hmm. then you expect anything to happen. Do you mean people in Mount Kenya can sit back and see someone who is the face of their shareholding in this government being uh, sidelined? Let me tell you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, if you remember, mm -hmm. and uh, you might have read in the history, mm -hmm. that President Moy, how we used to work, mm -hmm is that uh, either your closest of friends mm -hmm. takes over from you so that you don't know when did he betray me. Mm -hmm. Like if you are the minister in charge of uh, mm -hmm. certain department, let's say trade, mm -hmm. and you have a neighbor who is a good friend of yours mm -hmm. and you very nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's appointed the minister mm -hmm. and you are sacked the same afternoon. Mm -hmm. So anything can happen. Mm -hmm. They can look for somebody else to replace him for the intervening period. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Possibly the chess board mm -hmm. and um, the, uh, the, the medicine man may be telling William, uh, look for another block because the Mount Kenya seems to be more slippery than it was uh -huh. in the last election. Very well. So he may be looking for another block, uh -huh. and perhaps Raila's block uh -huh. is one of the candidates for the next political dispensation. Uh -huh. yeah. Still on the outcry from a section of Mount Kenya MPs over what they term uh, uh, and, uh, predatory taxes, one person who is uh, coming up as sort of the iron lady of this time, that is Gadoni Wamushomba, is among those who voted against uh, these bills in Finance Act of 2023, which are going to affect negatively farmers, especially those in Mount Kenya. I was in a situation where Bai Wamshomba is finally being vindicated and history is actually coming up to save her. Yeah, I think we've said in this channel mm -hmm. that Wamshomba is just responding mm -hmm. to the aspirations of our constituents mm -hmm. and the general frustrations farmers are faced with. Mm -hmm. Because remember, one of the main principles, uh, mm -hmm. main, uh, main points mm -hmm. of Kenya Kwanzaa was that they are going to do value addition, improve productivity, uh, ensure that uh, they get cheaper animal feed for purposes of doubling milk production. That was the term, <laughs> doubling milk production. And therefore, when you double milk production, you can sell at a lower price, but still allow the consumer to pay less, <laughs> but allow yourself to make more money. <laughs> that has not happened. The cost of animal feed has gone through the roof. Uh -huh. The cost of acaricides has gone through the roof and every mm -hmm. other component that you invest in livestock subsector has gone up. Uh -huh. So Wamushomba has been responding to the frustrations of our people, particularly in Kidunguri. Mm -hmm. Kidunguri has been the hub of milk production. Today, if you went to many of those uh, semi or um, what, do you call, what do you call it? Um, uh, semi-zero grazing or zero grazing units mm -hmm. in, in Kidunguri, they are not 
in operation mm -hmm. at all. Most of them are dilapidated because farmers really produce for profit. Mm -hmm. And if you are not mm -hmm. making any profit at all, why should you just be having cows that give you no, ma no, no, no milk mm -hmm. or less milk than they should? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because some farmers, if you are producing 27 liters for five months, that is when per cow, that's when you can say, I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. But anything below 20, for many farmers that are, are on zero grazing, they will cull the animals uh -huh. and, uh, and or even close the business. Mm -hmm. So this is what is happening. And mm -hmm. Mamushomba, I'm so happy that uh, she's been able to stand out as one of those who don't fear mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the agitation from certain quarters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say more, but you know our friend likes reminding us that he's the president. Mm -hmm. But we know he is. Chebukati pronounced him. A court of law affirmed him. So telling us, don't you know that I'm the president, means either he himself is not aware, or he's not sure, mm -hmm. or he's yet to come into, reality, into terms with it that, yes, he's the president. I just want to remind him, you are the president, my brother. Are yeah. you part of the, of, of the quarter that uh, substrates the argument of for people like Murillo and his counterparts, they made their own bed, so it's time for them to lie on it? Um, <laughs> we, we make mistakes. <laughs> and um, um, uh, 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 unlike some people who say they were in the school of Mike Bucky, <laughs> I think I stayed in that school long enough to learn something. Uh -huh. Which is? Uh, which is? Uh -huh. When somebody makes a mistake, mm -hmm. give him a chance to correct. Mm -hmm. So I still believe mm -hmm. those MPs mm -hmm. might have seen the folly of voting without going through uh, every bill with a tooth comb. Mm -hmm. And in future, their constituents should give them a, time, a, a chance mm -hmm. so that in future they learn from the mistakes they have made. Cool. Knowing that somebody like Murillo mm -hmm. is a first term MP. Member of parliament. Yeah, member of parliament. Uh -huh. So he's mm -hmm. learning. Uh -huh. yeah. Could it that maybe for Murillo and uh, his allies, maybe their hands were tied during the, the, the legislation over the Finance Act of 2023, and maybe they were responding to what the executive wanted from them? Uh, perhaps, perhaps not. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I, I told you the element of time is also important. Mm -hmm. If you give me notes uh, and you expect me to give reasonable answers within the next 20 minutes without allowing me to go through, reflect, mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's why, you know, there is what they call the first reading mm -hmm. for a bill. And after the first reading, a good member of parliament will go through. The first reading is just to introduce in parliament mm -hmm. and make it part of the material for parliament. Mm -hmm. Then the second reading is when discussion is done, mm -hmm. amendments are done, and uh, it can be either thrown out or certain amendments can be made mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that the bill almost changes in its original structure. Mm -hmm. The third reading is for you to make some minor corrections if there are any. Mm -hmm. And from there, now it goes to the next stage where the president will have to give assent mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so forth. Mm -hmm. So in the first reading, I don't know how, what was the window between the first reading and the second reading. Because at times they collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, that first reading, then somebody says, uh, we, we, we propose that this is brought to the second reading by leave of the House. By leave of the House means without a single member of parliament objecting. If one of them objected and gave reasons, the speaker will say, no, let us go through the normal process. Uh -huh. so, so that first reading is meant to give, it's a sort of a warning to members of parliament that yes, there is an issue. And uh, the second reading now is a period of, of debate. And as people debate, as you listen to them, you also build your own thoughts. And you're able to say, okay, I never saw this. Mm -hmm. This is happening. Very well. Yeah. Well, there you have it from the powerhouse himself, former cabinet minister, Kipritu Arab Kira, today talking matters what a section of Mount Kenya members of parliament have called predatory and discriminatory taxes uh, that is targeting their farmers in their backyards. You've heard from him, and whether the government or stakeholders therein will tap to his nuggets of wisdom, 
it remains to be seen. Until next time on, uh, on Richard Mwenge Exclusive, always a pleasure to have you on board. Do tune in to our other programs on the channel with Jadiel uh, Kabiro, Evan Sokini, and a host of other people who are normally involved in bringing you the best content that is of timely and will help you make informed economic and governance decisions as a citizen and as a leader. Until next time, adios.